I'm going to head on into the second session of today. We've got we've got Jamie Garral, uh, a financial ninja in coaching terms with clients. Uh, I don't know anybody that can get um, clearer, more specific numbers around financials and and visible with clients faster than Jamie. So on that note, I'm going to to hand over to you now, Jamie, to to take us away. Thanks, James. Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Excellent. Thank you. It great, great, gives me great pleasure to present to you today on getting greater results and with financial visibility. For those you don't know me, I'm Jamie Gorrell, and it's been really proud to be an action coach since 2013. Now, in your question boxes, can you please write down what you think is the quickest and cheapest way to get results with clients? In your questions box, quickest and cheapest way to get results with clients. James, can you call them out, please? Certainly can, yeah. Debtors raising prices, test and measure, price increase, increase selling price, price increase, um, track their numbers, set goals, work on profit margin and conversion, age debtors, efficient expenses, know the numbers, price increases, cash flow. Um, com conversion rate, cash flow visibility, putting the prices up, monitoring the Excellent. accounts receivable. Excellent. There Thank you, go. James. That's a really good uh, range of things. So basically what I found is this, and it comes from the great Peter Drucker, one of the gurus in management. What gets measured gets managed. I want to give you an example. As a coach I coached um, last year, uh, doing really well with the confidence to show, and our first session was literally, the body language was almost like, yeah, it's all going good. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's all great. I'm not sure what we're going to cover today, Jamie. So I got him to put some numbers on the dashboard. And the first thing we spotted is that his seminar in three days time had two people booked. So what does that tell you about what the client tells you in the, in the first session or the diag and what actually might be the reality? In your question box, please. Type it away in the question box, box. Let's um, let's get this. So, what does it tell you? Denial, uh, maybe very different. Delusion, not close to reality. Denial and self self flattery. Delusional. I don't know what's going on. I don't believe what they say. Hoodwinking. Denial. BS. Denial. Delusional. Sabotage. Everything is fine when they don't know. Really not, good points, James. You, really good points. Really good points. Yeah. Um, Sometimes it's just not front of mind. That coach knew he didn't have any um, people in his seminar. So he's either trying to impress me or it just wasn't front of mind. So one of the, talked about the quickest and easiest ways. And what I found is giving them the visibility of what's going on around their business as soon as possible gets absolutely amazing results. So I'm going to just show you the type of results you can get. Now, these people had financial visibility through coaching at the absolute core of what we did. So top left, the um, uh, urban boxer there, the osteopath. Again, I got, I got him to do a few things, but we just tracked every week his numbers on his lead generation and his, and his conversions. And he got 50% in three months. Both of us were shocked. That was his best year in, in 40 years. The same with on a, on a the bottom left, the first national finance services, again, we tracked all the marketing metrics and all of them. And, and, and dramatically, Lechco, which is um, on the bottom second from the left, 11 million to 28 years. And what I learned from that is when you've got a 300 man business that doesn't track its numbers properly and you introduce that, you get a ridiculous growth rate. So this guy didn't, most of these people have not spent money on a lot of marketing. They've just tracked their numbers and I made them track their numbers. And every time they came to a coaching session, they didn't want to show anyone bad numbers. So they made them good before the session. So my work was quite easy. It was quite a lot difficult in the beginning, get, showing them numbers, being patient with them if they're not bad. But once they've got a few numbers and you track them on repeat every week, in some cases for four years, the growth rates are ridiculous. And there's some of them are like bottom right hand corner, 
ridiculous percentage on return on investment on marketing on the bottom right hand corner. Now, this lady had an amazing marketing strategy before I started coaching with her, which she decided to stop because it was a lot of effort and it cost a bit of money. When we put the numbers on there and I got to just to repeat it and commit to repeating it, she got a ridiculous return on investment. And then so much so that when we entered her for BF, she won it. <laughs> she won the awards and she was shocked. She it was a session about why are you wasting my time in this world? I have no chance in a room for a thousand people. She won the award. Unbelievable. Just to show this is so simple. So what I'm going to show you today is three things. Number one, what can you measure for yourself to get your coaching business growing a lot quicker? Number two is what are the things you should focus your clients on in the COVID economy now? What's important right now to get the absolute best performance? Because that's what they need you right now. And if you're not good at numbers now, you've got to learn fast now. You've got to learn. I'm going to show you today exactly so the three things. So for your coaching business, what's important? What's important in the COVID economy? And what are the additional reports when we come out of the COVID economy that you need your clients to produce for you, obviously, at the COVID economy essentials? So cash flow forecast. Now, I did a webinar on this. It didn't record. So what I've done is I've created a detailed blog, which I, I did jointly with Andy Norris. And there's a link which I've put on the Facebook page and the WhatsApp group. And I've also asked James to email it to every coach. I'm so going to, uh, Jamie, I'm going to copy that link in now into okay. the chat box. So everybody's got it in the chat box. Okay. So just be aware you need one. And there is something which is going to give you detailed guidance on how to get the quickest, most accurate cash flow forecast, even if your client has the worst, most, the worst systems in the world and no accurate data at all. If you're on the webinar, you knew how. Uh, if not, you click on this link and you'll get the, the, a detailed guidance on exactly how to do it. And, and, um, and by the way, we've got we've got the webinar recording with audio now as well, by the way, Jamie. We've fixed Have it. you? You've got the audio. You dug it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rachel excellent. Was... Oh, oh, fantastic. Well done, Rachel. She's like to say that. So anyway, on this particular example, this was a construction business. And they gained a lot by matching the money coming in from job one to the money going out with job one. And just looking at it and it helped them forecast easily um just to show because you know things like construction there's always a big cash gap you've got to pay your guys and pay the suppliers often before the client pays you so it's like one of the most crucial industries and also now you can be using this with government guidance so knowing that you're going to get your um grant for furloughed employees in May and when you're paying your people in April, knowing what the cash gap is and getting onto the bank and getting your loan and the overdraft organized. So cash flow forecast is absolutely fundamental. Every client that's been affected by COVID-19 should be having one of these. Otherwise, to be frank, you're be just being a dis you're giving them a disservice as your coach. So learn this fast and, and use the detailed guidance if needed. Next most important thing, cash is king. Collect easiest thing, collect money. So this tracker here, what it does, it tracks how much better you're getting each week with um, your client. So the column that says older, I've got the, I'm hovering over it now, is the one to focus on. What are the old debts and are they getting better or worse? And what you'll need to do with your clients is number one, get them to show you. And in any, any accounting software, you'll get aging. You'll get who, who are, how, how many people owe you after 30 days or 60 days or 90 days it's got period one two and three the current is normally less than 30 period one is normally 30 to 60 period two is, is a 60 to 89 and period three is 90. so look at the old ones and get them line by line to tell you what they're doing about it and introduce them to debt collectors if it's not because this is crucial that they're all over this and they'll have to get payment plans with their clients you know if the clients aren't paying so when can you pay pay me you know, 20% a week, but at least it's something and it's going to maximize the cash opportunity. So again, you're going to get this. You can look at it in detail and you can get the this report from your client's accounting system. If not, they just have to write it by pen and paper if they're not there yet with getting information like this. But it's crucial. They know who owes them and people are actively chased every week. Next point is um, sales and marketing activity. So if they are able to trade, you, like you did for your business with the CODs and DIAGs, this is the CODs and the DIAGs for the client. So this particular client, 
it was construction, they're getting referrals, getting repeat business, and they found that Bark was working well for them, buying leads from Bark. And again, we're looking at the conversion from leads to the prospects and how many book meetings they had, how many meetings actually happened, and then how many orders. Any questions on this? Let's check the question box. I'm I'm manning it all the time, Jamie. So there's yeah, no been none so far, but uh, you're just checking in now. So let's just do, um, there we go. No questions. No questions. So some people okay. are saying they haven't got a chat box. I will paste the the link into into the question box as an answer for everybody. So okay. So, I'll, so, I'll, so I'll do that. okay. So yep. this is their numbers. The activity. How much are they doing each one? The next thing, so at the moment, you'll notice with this client, their sat meetings and new orders is really bad. They're meeting people, but no one's buying. So the next thing to look at when that's happening is the sales pipeline. Yeah. So line by line, so looking at the biggest, most convertible deal first, what, who have they seen? How big's the deal? What's the conversation? Why are they not buying? And sometimes that can be a whole session. If they're not converting, that is really expensive because they're buying these leads and they're meeting people. They're just not converting. So is it the wrong people? Is it they, they're really bad at selling? Or is it the timing's wrong or something? So really focusing on that. And if you, the conversion is one of the quickest ways to, to grow the businesses, if you can just get why is it they're not doing it, then that's it because it's no extra money. It's just extra profit. Any questions on yes. this sales pipeline yes. tracker? Well, the, look, there was a bit of a, a, a lag here with with sales, uh, with questions coming in from the last one, actually, Jamie. So okay. first question, what's Bark? Bark is a lead, it's a, it's, a, it's a portal you can buy leads from. So it does lots of industries, including construction. So it's people that want a quote for a job. Mm -hmm. how, how do you handle lags? I uh, leads generated this week, but converts later. Very good question. Over time, it will more or less even out. So all you do, for instance, here, so on the 20th of March, that was the referrals they received in that in that week. And these were the meetings they booked in that week. That's meetings they sat in that week. Because otherwise it makes it too complicated to record. But over mm -hmm. time, it will even itself out. Yeah, take averages. Yeah. Any average. other questions? It's a good question that was. Um, I missed asked the question, how is that tracked? I'm unsure about which part is referring to. I think it came at the, the sales part. The sales part? The the next slide that you went to, that one. It's in Excel, I'll get them to write it down. Mm -hmm. So I'll sit with them and they send it to me the day before the coaching session. I look at it, he, have my questions and go. He says, oh. ignore the question now. He's, he's, okay, he's just asking, ignore the question, he's, he's worked it out. Okay, yeah, great, excellent. It. Okay, so Good. this is what I'd focus on more than anything in the COVID. Obviously, the sales pipeline, they have to have some selling. And if you're repivoting them, doing something else, like, you know, like, um, you know, the bike shop that is now, sorry, the gym that is now hiring their equipment, this is crucial, especially when you're trying something new to get the early inquiries to see how do we shape it for, to maximum effect. So this can be useful if, if your clients are trying something new, a new, a new pivoting into a new market or a, a new marketing. Okay, so the next thing is there'll be a point where we get out of this and that's when we'll all come together in massive crowds like this screen. And what I'm going to show you is the additional reports that you need to be getting your clients to produce to maximize their growth. So the first one is when you do the alignment, you're going to need to find out what they want. What is that they want in, say, three to five years? And normally, it will require money. When you get them to dream big, you know, they want this house, or they want this yacht, or they want to see their daughter in Australia every six months, they'll need money. And the first thing in their mind is, how am I going to get the money? So the first thing you show them is, this is how you're going to get the money. I'll work with you, and this could take two months of sessions on a three-year plan where the net profit at the bottom is showing you how you're going to get the money. So what this also shows is the gradual increase and from where. So column one is the last year we've just done. And what we've seen with this business is I've called it repeat business reactive, 144 leads, which basically means word of mouth. 
they have just been order takers for the last year and those are the numbers they've got yeah so they need to go right if we're doing that now what is it we need to do so we worked out that number number one we need to start actually calling people who didn't buy six months ago and we've just worked out we're going to get 17 we've assumed we're going to get 17 leads from them we're actually going to ask people for referrals and we're going to get 15 leads from them we're going to start linkedin and we've worked out just from our discussions that we're going to put down 24 and tell you going to start some telemarketing as well you know have a target list of who is our avatar who we're going to go after and let's start calling them and getting introductions and from that um we're working out that we're going to get um you know we just put a conversion rate there um which gets number of sales we've also assumed that there's no change in the average sale and this is how we're going to get that growth and then again we've they've been quite conservative because they get a lot of repeat business i said look just just keep it that we get the growth next year and it just kind of repeats and repeats and even just doing that they're seeing they're getting some really good growth so what you do you do this with them and then what you do is you do the the, the next year it month by month so if you see here march 21 the five seven six triple nine net profit that comes to here so that is now month by month so they can see each month and then each month you give them a target to go after and then you show them the, the actual against the target to see are they going quick in us any questions on any of these two slides this one and the previous one lots of good comments brilliant loving this kind of stuff um client satisfaction question i'm assuming that as a measure um how do you use this first year plan with a retail business okay so retail business um so firstly you you have sales cost of sales and you put the staffing in uh, and then what you do you might add shops so what you do is you put introducing new shops it might be in, in month five you bought have a new shop so you put the cost of the of the shop in month three and four and then the new revenues of the new shop got it also for existing shop um, if you're introducing visibility on each shop metrics and kpis you can put some growth in there let's say we do 10 percent growth for the next year because we're going to introduce kpis to the shop we're going to do some promotion for repeat business so you have two things growing existing shops and then adding new shops that's exactly what i did with that you saw with that let the um 11 to 28 million in three years that's exactly what we did so it's a great pertinent question any other questions on this or the previous two slides <laughs> i want jamie to be my numbers coach <laughs> uh, uh, uh you do all the projections with clients on the first um on the first two months of coaching is that right so everything okay, we've I... seen so far it, it, i mean look it is pretty quick i did position this front end folks jamie does get this level of visibility incredibly fast with his clients i get them to do it so what you do is you've got to do it step by step so i do this yourself and it's easy to do you just literally get what you get from them you get their get their last 12 months month by month from you know sage zero or quickbooks or just pen and paper just say to them you know what do you take each week does that mean it's this this year so just try and get some basic numbers and, and make up the rest if they don't have it if, if they've got accounting to software then get it exported to excel and use that as a template then all you do is then work out from their leads where they've got the inquiries from and then work out what strategy you think you're going to do with them and brainstorm with them because it needs to be their buy-in to try and get them to do as much as possible and you Jamie, just fill a couple in the of questions yeah um how do you incorporate repeat business into this um this is the hardest bit in implementing the five ways in my experience great question so basically what i do is i assume that um so you've got here repeat business re reactive so if you've got a sale the we call the lead repeat business so you can see here that's not 163 um di different that's 163 customers when they're spending on average 10,000 a year so that can either be that that is 10,000 a transaction and then if there's three customers then 
you call it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so there's two ways of doing it. But one way to make it simple is that each new sale is a new lead. So it's, you call it repeat business. He gets it. It's Sam and Len. He's, he's, he's got it already. So he's just putting oh, in the question okay. box. Excellent. Thank you very okay. much. You've already explained that. Excellent. One more question and we move on. We've got 10 minutes left. Uh, how do you increase repeat reactive business? Um, there's only one way is you get more clients this year and that will repeat next year by itself. <laughs> nice. That's just a BF4, Jamie. Yeah. Get more clients this year and automatically the reactive repeat business will increase by itself. Yeah. Good yeah. point. Really good point. Any other questions on this before I move on to the, the other reports? Uh, how do you track leads and source in a shop? Um, with a shop, I look at footfall. So you can get something on the door that records footfall, people coming in and out. And then that growing will give you an idea of more people coming in the shop. Yeah. And then the amount of uh, receipts gone through, uh, gone through the till tells you how many com- went in compared to how many bought. You've got average sales and all that. Yeah. Kind of stuff. And try and get some sort of loyalty card and, and, and track the, the redemptions <laughs> on that loyalty card offer just to look at repeat business. If, they, if they've not got a loyalty card system that's computerized. Jim, it loads of BFOs, loads of compliments coming in. So let's move on. Let's move on okay. here. So no more questions on this. Yeah. Okay. So no, no, the, the, good comments. Excellent. Okay, great. So that's the first. So the next thing is obviously the 90 day plan. This is in the system. This isn't a, a Jamie thing, but I just wanted just to, just to emphasize that the goals try and put numbers on them. So oh, oh. Uh, one second, one second. So generate 30 qualified leads by the end of June, that level of granularity. You need to be at the end of the quarter going, have I made it and have I not made it? Yeah. Next goal, receive six deposits before the end of November. So the two, one is getting the leads. Jamie, we're, take... seeing, we're, we're seeing a, a screen that says dashboard that turned a loss. Uh, we're not seeing the 90-day the goal screen now. Let's just see. Just go back is. one. So it's paused. Uh, let's just have a look. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. So that's taken off. Just reshare it and then go back to the night. Yep, yeah, and click from there. There we go. Um, so what are you seeing now? Uh, we, uh, it's not. You're not in presenter mode yet. So if you just click on slide seventeen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then, okay. Yeah. Just resume there. There we go. Okay. So the important thing here is to is so generate 30 qualified leads by the end of June. Receive six deposits by the end of November. So you've got to put a, a goal there that they know they're going to get and you remind about it each week. So just focus on those two for now. And then all you do is fill in the gap of what they're doing each week. And that can then correspond to your focus sheets. And then you can use this as a check to make sure that you're on course for the 90 days based on what you're doing each week and they think about it at the beginning. Any questions on the 90 day plan? So let's get the question box, but uh, let's go. I like how it can correspond to the focus sheet. All clear. Very good. That's the first point that's come in. Okay, I'll move on. all, all, All clear, yeah. Okay, what I'm going to share with you now is because one, one of the things I wanted to cover is, is also a KPI dashboard. So, so this dashboard I'm showing you, it helped turn a six million loss into a five minute, one pound five minute profit by looking at these numbers every week for six years. Now, so that's quite a turnaround. It just shows you the absolute power of these numbers. And this business, you know, if you make six million loss, you can't spend money on too much. So I'm going to show you, look at the things that we measured to get there. Can everyone see? Okay, so the first thing, and this, we didn't have all this on day one. What you've got to do with the client is start with w- one line. Because if you give this on day one, you'll just blow their mind and they just get lost. So the first three things, financial, is what we started with. And we had probably a month of just that. So what, can people, what are people spotting from financial? What question would you ask um, the people in the business? when you see the numbers under the heading of financial. 
see what comments we've got coming in. Uh, why is the GP falling? Why is the cheap GP going down? Uh, what is the cost of sale? Uh, why is the cost of sales rising? Reducing GP. Brilliant. And, yep. and because this business was a mess, I had no idea. They just saw money going out, go, the bank balance going down, down. I had no idea. But when they got this, they knew where to look. So they started there and they found that the commission system was linked to turnover, not gross profit. So reps were selling the easiest thing at low margin. They didn't care. So they fixed that and then it improved. <laughs> So any comments on the winning new business section? Let's see what we've got. Winning new business. Come on, folks. Get them in the question box. Analyze it. Add some comments. Uh, very low conversion rate. Why is activity of cold calls going down? Um, uh, let's have a look what else. Number of sales reps has fallen. Activities declining, conversion rate is too low. Um, more from less people, They're getting more from less people. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant comment. That's exactly it. So what we found is there's some bad apples in the business. They weren't doing very well, and the managers were hiding before, be, behind um, bullshit. And when we saw that and measured it, there was a we got rid of some bad people. And when we got rid of bad people, I'm going to take you on to the next page. What we found is the attrition rate um, was higher in sales. We got rid of the bad people. We also found that when we did that, the rest of the business, look at the staff survey, were happier because the bad people left. Also, customer service, there was less inbound calls for these sales reps missed selling, which means that the customer service had an easier time dealing with less angry people and the customers are happy. So what this dashboard did, it helped get the real problem of there was some bad reps there that was bringing down the whole business. I've gone through this quite quickly. Um, I've, I've done this in detail on another webinar, which is on the system two years ago. So if you search my name, 2017, you'll get 25 minutes on just this. So feel free to look at that if you want more detail of how this added 7 million to someone's bottom line. It's quite powerful. And again, looking at numbers each week, sounds boring, but you know, 6 million pound increase in, in profit is actually quite exciting. What I want to know now is any questions you've got or your top learning. Yeah, top let's learning go with questions. That. Yeah, top learnings are questions. So uh, we've got um, three minutes, guys. Um, what was the business type? A retailer? That one was online marketing. They sold um, an online business directory and subscription SEO and website services like, you know, like Thompson Local or Yale. <laughs> Uh, here's one of the biggest learnings then as well. Heal yourself first, i.e. I've got to do this stuff on myself. Um, business is numbers. Top learning, measure everything. I mean everything. Um, time, time spent making the dashboard and reviewing the numbers is time spent well essential. Make numbers mandatory in every coaching session. Numbers are the answer. If you don't measure, you can't manage. Push hard to get the dashboards visible. Um, what gets measured gets managed. Um, brilliant insight for, for my clients and me. Uh, just track client numbers every single week uh, on repeat. Duh. <laughs> uh, get, get numbers faster position. It takes a month. Jamie, so um, just where we started at, at the beginning. Yeah. How long does it take you then to get that? You know the basics of a dashboard and the the financial targets in place like you showed at the start and the cash flow forecast so what on average does it take for you to get all of that visible it, it varies from one week to nine months depending on the client <laughs> i get as much as i can as quick as i can but if if they are clueless and they have no information all you can do is help them get some information starting with the most important the cash flow thing that you sent the link to, because it comes mm -hmm. from online banking, you can get that straight away. So if they have nothing, I just get that as a starting point. But if they've got zero with information, then everything you've seen can be produced in the first month. Brilliant. Uh, question in, does this create early perturbation for the client? I mean, 
we, we our job is to create some perturbation and keep yeah. clients in perturbation remember so um, it does because you're presenting facts because perturbation you can have an argument about should you do this and should you do not because this is fact there's no argument this is bad we need to fix this so your only conversation is what do we need to do to fix it not is it a problem mm -hmm. jamie mr mr Graal, once once again you've um you've helped every 